right guys, so today we're gonna go through the muscles of the head and neck. When we're looking at the muscles of the head and neck, there are lots of little hints that you can use to help you remember where the muscles are. Um, for example, the shape of the muscle can be very helpful. Um, the orbicularis, orbits, it's a circle. We have a couple muscles that we refer to as orbicularis. For example, orbicularis oculi, we'll see orbits around the eye. So orbicularis, because it orbits, it's a circle. Oculi, because of the eye, right? Ocular is referring to the eye. Um, also, if you remember your bones, that will be really helpful. Remember that the bone up here in the front of the skull was the frontal bone? Well, the muscle right here is the frontal belly. In the back, remember, was the occipital bone? Well, this is the occipital belly. So remembering your bones and bone features is very helpful. Um, the shape of the muscle can be very helpful. We'll see that um, for a few of the muscles, we have a minor and a major. So zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. Uh, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major. Teres minor, teres major. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see the, the size of the muscle there changing, but otherwise the muscles are very similar to each other. Sometimes it's the action of the muscle that's important. So for example, for example, the levator scapula elevates the scapula. Um, so levator like elevates. So we'll talk about all the little tips and tricks and hints um, as we go through each of the muscles. So we'll go ahead and get started. First, let's talk about the muscles of the skull. There's a really large muscle that extends all the way from the frontal region back to the occipital region. And that's referred to as the occipitofrontalis. Occipital to frontal, so occipitofrontalis. Now, <clears throat> when we look at the occipitofrontalis, there's a frontal belly, so this region of muscle in the front is the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis. And then we see a large, flat, connective tissue connection all the way back to the occipital belly, which is the little belly of muscle in the very back. Now this connection, this broad, flat, connective tissue that connects the occipital belly and the frontal belly is an aponeurosis. Remember, when we talked about the ways that muscles can connect to each other or connect to bone, we said that the collagen can form a really tight bundle, and that's a tendon, or it can form a really flat sheet, that's an aponeurosis. So like the gray shading that you see on here is showing you the aponeurosis, right? like collagen fibers, connective tissue fibers and proteins that connect the um, <clears throat> occipital belly to the frontal belly. Also on the side of the head here, we have another muscle called the temporalis. And remember, this is the um, temporal bone that sits on the side of the skull. So the temporalis correlates with the temporal bone. When we look at the face, <clears throat> we have multiple muscles that are circular. I already showed you guys before the orbicularis oculi. So surrounding each of the eyes is this circular muscle called orbicularis oculi. There's also a circular muscle that goes around the mouth. That's the orbicularis oris. Right? Orbicularis because it's a circle, oris because of the mouth. Think oral. Oral is referring to the mouth. So orbicularis oculi circles the eye, orbicularis oris circles the mouth. If I turn this just a little bit, you can see there are these two strap-like muscles that start up here at the cheekbone area and go down towards the, um, towards the mouth. Now, if you remember the cheekbone right here, that that's the zygomatic bone. And both of these muscles are named for the fact that they connect to the zygomatic bone. They are zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. It is zygomaticus minor on the top, major on the bottom. Um, and actually, we're gonna see that same pattern with teres minor and major and rhomboid minor and major. Um, all three of those are minor over major. So um, if the zygomatic bone is right here, the cheekbone, hey, you can see the muscles starting here at the cheekbone and heading down towards the mouth. This top one is zygomaticus minor 
and then the bottom one is zygomaticus major. Now there is another muscle um, that looks kind of like those that's down more inferior in the face. Um, this one is more horizontal. When you look at this, it's more of a horizontal line. And notice it does not connect up to the zygomatic bone. So this one is not zygomaticus. This one is actually called resorius. So we have zygomaticus minor, zygomaticus major, and resorius. There are two other muscles here at the cheek that you guys need to know. Um, this deep muscle right here, you see it in between, um, like if you go down deeper in between zygomaticus major and resorius, down deep in the cheek right here, this is called the buccinator. Think buccal. Buccal refers to the cheek. So the buccinator is down deep in the cheek. Then this kind of superficial broad strap like muscle that you see right here, this is referred to as the masseter. And you can see it connects to the mandible, right? It connects to the lower jaw. And this muscle is important muscle in chewing. Well, chewing is called mastication. So the masseter is used for mastication. Finally, the last muscle that you guys need to know is in the chin. Um, I'll actually show you it on one of the other models. It's shown better on one of the other models, but it is like directly right here in the front of the chin and it's referred to as the mentalis. Remember, mental means chin. So the mentalis is the muscle on the very front of the chin. Um, <clears throat> this is the model that shows the mentalis well. Is this one right here in the very front of the chin is the mentalis. We're gonna go ahead and look at all of the muscles again on this model. Now this model is only showing half of the head, um, but obviously each side of the face is like a mirror image. So going from the occipital region in the back all the way up to the frontal region is the occipital frontalis. Specifically, the frontal belly is in the front, and then this gray is showing you the aponeurosis that connects to the occipital belly in the back. Here on the side of the head by the temporal bone, we have the temporalis. When we look at the front here, the orbicularis oculi orbits around the eye and the orbicularis oris orbits around the mouth. Now you only see half of it here, but it does orbit all the way around. Looking here, coming from the zygomatic bone down towards the mouth, we have zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. Deep in the cheek, we have the buccinator. And then this superficial broad muscle right here is the masseter. Extending from the masseter um, towards the mouth here, we have the resorius. Well, you only see it coming from the masseter, um, is the resorius. So zygomaticus minor, zygomaticus major, resorius. And then finally, on the chin here in the very front is the mentalis. Now let's take a second to look at the muscles of the neck. Now when we look at this model, you guys will notice that the two sides look different from each other, right? This side is different from this side. That's because this side is showing us the more superficial muscles. So this muscle right here, for example, which is the sternocleidomastoid, it sits on top of um, another set of muscles. On this side, this is the deep side. So we've pulled off the sternocleidomastoid so that you can really clearly see the muscles that sit underneath it. So that's why the sides look different from each other. In reality, um, the sides are, are symmetrical. They're, they are the same. And actually, there is another muscle that's very superficial that comes over all of this. It's a really like thin, really flat muscle that covers all of this, and it's called the platysma, um, P-L-A-T-Y-S-M-A, -A, platysma. Um, it's not shown on any of the models that we have, though. So we'll start on this side right here with the sternocleidomastoid. The name is telling you exactly what it's connecting to. It extends from the mastoid process up here 
Um, <clears throat> remember, the mastoid process is kind of a, a large, rounded process at the, um, the inferior and posterior side of the temporal bone. So the mastoid process is where the sternocleidomastoid connects up here. And then as it extends down towards the front of the neck, it connects to both the sternum and to the clavicle. So sterno, because you can see this part right here coming in towards the sternum, and then this kind of broad um, section right here is connecting to the clavicle. So clido, sternocleidomastoid. Um, this one's really easy to see on yourself. If you turn your head like this, you can see it. And then especially if you like tense up your neck, you can see it really well. Um, and we use that clinically a lot uh, as a marker to find where specific vessels um, and specific nerves are gonna be passing through in the neck. So the sternocleidomastoid is really important that you know it um, from the surface as well. Now, if we pull the sternocleidomastoid off, on this side, you can see the muscles that sit underneath it. Right? These three right here are referred to as the scalenes. Now you do need to know them individually though. The anterior scalene, middle scalene, and posterior scalene. So when you look at these, this is towards the front, right? So this is the most anterior of them. So the anterior scalene, middle scalene, and then you just see a little bit of the posterior scalene. One, two, three. If you just continue back around the back of the neck, the next muscle that you got to right here, this is the levator scapula. And if you follow it down, look, you can see how it's coming down to the scapula. You see the spine of the scapula right here, and then the medial border, medial edge of the scapula is coming right here. So the levator scapula comes down and connects um, at the scapula and elevates the scapula. And then finally, this muscle right here is the splenius capitis. Splenius capitis. Um, <clears throat> it comes up and connects to the back of the skull. Uh, the way I remember that is like that's where a cap would sit, right? If you were wearing a hat, the cap or hat would sit right here. So splenius capitis, levator scapula, the scalenes, anterior scalene, middle scalene, posterior scalene. And then on this side, we can see our sternocleidomastoid. Now on the back, there is a trapezius. Um, you can see the very top of it on this side. The trapezius is like a trapezoid. It's a really large muscle that forms um, like a kite shape all the way superficially on the back. We're gonna look at that in the next video when we look at the muscles of the torso, um, both the abdominal pelvic region, um, the thoracic region, and then the back as well. Right, so that is it for the head and neck. Um, not bad at all.